Full foot action. I can't figure it out. This conference will now be recorded. We begin with flight salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everybody, it's February 22nd, it's Tuesday, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, uh, Marion <laughs> County Commission meeting. Um, we'd like to begin with a moment of silence in memory of Sheriff Rob Kraft. Uh, he'll be slowly missed. And our sympathy goes out to the family and to the members of the Sheriff's Office. We will begin with the public forum. I believe Brent is here to make a few comments. Have an update for us? I do, yeah. Uh, we've had some, we've had one donation of $5,000 come from the Tampa 4-H and uh, we were just awarded a $5,000 grant today as well. So. I uh, believe we're sitting somewhere around thirty-five thousand dollars that we have spoken for this project up until now. So, and what is this project? The 4-H building project in the Marion County Trail Center. Okay. Yeah. The Flint Hill Rural Electric. They've kind of spoken that they're going to have a significant uh, donation as well. Do you have any idea yet on how much? make it go I mean we're gonna uh, the it was like seventy eight thousand dollars and some change the the total project that we're looking at. And you have thirty five is it roughly thirty five yeah because the fair has ten thousand possibly eleven thousand we're putting towards it and four H also has ten thousand they're putting towards it. Have you contacted that Mr. Yeah uh, I have a I went through their whole process, okay. <laughs> which I've heard back from them, but it sounds like they're donating all the labor and materials to run gas to the other buildings. Okay. And they might do a financial okay. contribution as well as I've heard back. So. Okay. All right. I have a grant filled out with Evergy for $10,000. Uh, I'm waiting to, for one piece of paper from the IRS to uh, complete that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll do some phone calls. You have a time frame where you, when you'd like to get started on it? The, the thing is, is uh, with inflation going the way it is, I've talked to uh, Fleming's and we've already missed a deadline for them, so the price has already gone up $4,500 with them because we, we missed that. So the longer we wait, the worse it gets, type yeah, of thing. So that's going to ease up for a while. This uh, is for equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, we're adding a whole new HVAC system. I mean, but Fleming's went up. Yeah, Fleming's was. Make sure to go ahead and buy equipment to work someplace. Yeah, it was fifty-one thousand dollars before the the rising cost. Uh, electricals twenty-four thousand, and then we're uh, we're going to add one more exit door to that building, which will create a thousand people max occupancy for that facility. If, yeah. we don't, if we don't have the other door, it's going to decrease it by five hundred people. <laughs> Do you, do you have a target on how much you want raised before you lock in the equipment? Uh, the owner of Fleming's, Merle, yeah. he uh, said the equipment's probably six to eight months out. We can even receive it, so the sooner we can get it. I guess that's ordered. Like, yeah, the my better. question is when we just we'll get it locked in now. But if, if there's a concern or there's a reason you're not locking it in yet? Just the uncertainty of having all the funds uh, locked in before we commit to it. Okay, so are, are you looking to get to the full 78 or are you looking to just maybe get to the point where you can cover Flemings and then you could order that equipment? And I don't know, like, you know, that you might help out how 
Do you have a lead time on your big boxes? Yep, 12, 12 weeks usually on the big ones, but it could be, I mean, you know, that, I mean, you're talking the, not just a panel board, so. So it's going to be after the fair before you can start. I assume so. It's just it's, there's room left in the commercial building to store it all. Yes. I'm afraid, especially with that HVAC and electrical equipment, if you wait till later on, you're going to add another yeah. 4,500 or 5,000 on top yeah. of that. It's big ticket items. Easily. Yeah, it's big ticket items. And this is Ricky Roberts. He's the one that's uh, with the 4-H. So. Here, Ricky Roberts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. Be nice, doggy. <laughs> I ain't seen him in a minute. I've been gone for years. Yeah, gone. I didn't know who he was. Yeah, hey, all right. All right. Do you have a comment? Uh, well, well, yes, but I just want to know who that was. <laughs> Moving. Okay. First time they come here, they wasn't too sure of where they was at what was happening. They're seeing things are working here. They're somewhere around 30, 35 already. Mm -hmm. in. Okay. So not knowing where we want to be, but would we as a commission for the fair board stamp, pick a number in order to get the units coming, to get this coming, would we as a board okay that amount and then that we would help them up to that amount uh, you know, I'm saying stand by that amount. Whether that we stand for the whole thing or not right now, I don't know. But pick a number. Whether they need another thirty thousand or so to, to to at least get the equipment coming and go with go with that. I'm just giving you ideas. Is all I'm doing. Do you have enough now to cover electric and ease? No, 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 not all of fifty one thousand. You said yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. You got thirty five. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And it's already went up another four. That's what I mean. So you're right. In another there. month, it might go up another mm -hmm. certain percent. Mm -hmm. So that's just a suggestion. If the board would okay that to up to a certain extent, so they can get things ordered anyway. Get things going. <coughs> you don't have to pay for it. You get it. That's what Merle said as so, well. Yeah. So you're six months out from paying for it. And we we contemplated on just going ahead and ordering it. But just the uncertainty oh, of spending that kind of yeah. money that I don't yes. have, <laughs> it scared me, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You're no different than anybody else. Yeah. And I, so. If it's my money, it's different, but it's not my money I'm spending, so Correct. that's uh, even more scary. So I guess back to the question a few minutes ago, if uh, what would be the level, your comfort level of ordering, ordering equipment? If you had 50000 in your account, would you be comfortable Ordering the equipment. One thirty-five. Oh, it's gonna I'm be fifteen. Probably another twenty. I'm gonna stay out. Where you be comfortable here in a second? But I, I guess, guess uh, if you're thirty-five, if, if you got county, another twenty and you get, you'd be up to fifty-five. If the county would pledge forty-five, but you with the full intent of of trying to get more grants and take that off the taxpayers. Absolutely. So that it dwindles that 45 down to 20 or the 15. And if, if we could make some sort of thing like that, would that make the fair board comfortable to pull the trigger? And it seems like we're still really early in on this project. The, the more the board gets out on it, the more businesses kind of want to attach their name to it. And so I think that as we get along further in this, the number is going to kind of drop yeah, down as far I'd as I'd rather it. see us commit enough for them to get this ordered with the intent if down the road we can possibly help out some more. But that way you, you, you know you, you'd be covered on that. That would be the 45 and all I was asking was for him to try to yeah. reduce that number in the meantime before the equipment showed. So you're saying, Jonah, that the project will be funded fully, uh, and we will decrease the number as we go on with it. Yeah, that would allow you to know that if if no other additional funds came in, it was still covered. But if you could, if you could subsidize that somehow with grants or whatever, right. and to lower to, to lower the county chip. I've got to believe that, especially in Hillsboro, what's all the businesses in that. Know about it, they would want to contribute something. 
there's... You guys probably haven't been out? No. Pulled the door, he's been selling, telling a few people. Yeah. Yeah. I've honestly been going after kind of the bigger dollar amounts yeah. right off the bat, and I haven't, I haven't gone door to door. And we are, uh, we just had our fair board meeting Sunday, and with our sponsorship level letters we're sending out, we're just going to be another sheet in there explaining this whole project to every one of our sponsors where they can donate whatever they want towards this. And, you know, if, you, if we got this equipment and this all went south and failed, you could probably make money on the equipment because somebody else would be looking for a year from now. And we're all pitching. He's always thinking about business. <laughs> <laughs> didn't make you thinking comment. about inflation? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Merle made that comment that those are very uh, common units. So yeah. even if we don't use them for this project, he can He, he, he sells them somewhere else. else, yeah. It's not like you do anything special. You know, it's not like the hospital. Nothing. That helps you yeah. lower your risk. It'll be yeah. six, five, ten units is what we're going to be calling for this. I qualify for transient guest tags. <laughs> I wouldn't feel real comfortable with that. I mean, it's economic development, isn't it? That's it's tourism. 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 That's about a great question. Yeah. That's a great question for your attorney. <laughs> He's sitting here. I heard it. Yeah. I, I saw a head shake, though. I figured out. It would be a stretch. I wouldn't say you couldn't try that. I mean, because you can, you can make the argument, you know, that the fair attracts significant population, mm -hmm. some of whom are not necessarily exhibitors or related to the bag industry. So we this project kind of goes past the fair as well. Well, we think so. Yeah, that's yeah, true so as well. We think it goes well beyond the fair. We think it makes the building usable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's what I was looking at, the usability of the building down right. the road. The whole just, thing just becomes the usable now. Mm -hmm. Meetings and get together. So I mean, mm -hmm. that, would attract, that would attract some meetings maybe that yeah. would never meet. Oh, can. absolutely. It's, you would never get here. You can't. There's not a place for it. For example, like a quill forever banquet. Mm -hmm. Perfect spot for it. Large events like that. There's just not a large event structure here. In the county. Right. That I know of. Okay. okay, is there a direction to the board? I'd like to see them at least get the this eight track electrical equipment covered to where they know they Comfortable enough to be able to write a check for it. Commissioner Garing, why when you come up with forty five, was was that adding to the thirty five then? Was that what you was thinking? Yeah. And that would be a total of eighty. Which would be enough in theory to do the whole job. And then we'll, we'll try to lower that it's over enough to, time. It's enough to order everything that he knows of right now. Right. But and I've been going really hard after these grants and everything, so I, I guarantee you I'm gonna lower that number for you all. It's just Right. Having the certainty of uh, being able to cover it is my worst. I'd kind of like to know where the money's going to come from. Mm -hmm. If we can't use, well, if you commit 45, you've got to commit 45 in the budget or in an amount. Set that amount. Yes, it may decrease over time, but we have to take that out. Where's sales tax sitting? You got, you got any kind of money like that in there? Um, you could you could look at sales tax. You, we, we still don't have our financials for 2021. But I mean, sales tax would be appropriate. Well, you could put it back in there when it comes back in. I mean, and sales tax is in the general. Fund. It's in the general. About what are we running? Is this 50 some months? 40 some, 50 some months now? Sales tax. 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 Kick back this away. It goes back into the general budget. Then. That's just an idea. 
Is our council still researching? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could always make a motion um, to pay for it from transient guest tax funds if by, by, by law and yeah. otherwise to pay for it from sales tax. Okay. If you wanted to make a motion today. I, I guess my other question for the process side of it, if we commit 45000 does that actually go out at this point? We're just doing a loan. We're, or are we donating 45000 That's what I'm asking. It's got to be encumbered somehow. That's what I'm asking. If it's committed. Are we getting it back? Well, yeah, but it's still encumbered. <laughs> it's a not to exceed. So no no money is spent at this point. So is this something we can have our council research and then vote on it next week? But well, sure. We may get another price hike right by next week. So they generally, didn't, they didn't I commit. mean, we could do like a progress billing. So like when they get a bill, they can submit that for reimbursement mm -hmm. along with documentation. Oh, and then we could pay them. You know when okay. they when they're billed. I'm afraid, you know, we're going off Russia and stuff. It's, we're going to see a lot of price increases in the next 30 to 60 days. Because I don't disagree with you. Corporate world's going to get greedy on us. They see an opening, they're going to go up yeah. for it. So basically what they would do is when they receive a bill, they would submit a voucher to the county clerk's office for payment with the documentation of that bill. And whatever action the board takes, if it's a not to exceed amount, okay. then we would pay it, pay that um, to reimburse them okay. at that time. Next question is, does the commission, uh, and this may sound mean, but I think <laughs> it needs to be laid out in front here, is does the commission expect this to be spent first or second from the funds that's already available? Because we've done things like this in the past with, with different things, and it seems like all of a sudden they're spending this money first and then waiting with their money for other things. So well, being as part of theirs is grant money that I would think they would want it because they're going to have to report on it. <laughs> they can't leave it laying in the bank. Yeah. So we're, we're still trying to work up to where our county councilor is going to have to have a legal term for this, aren't we? I think you well, probably could have his opinion as a follow up because you you either be able to take it from there or not. Yeah. And if you don't, then you're still going to want to fund it, probably. Right. So do we have a direction? Do we have a motion? I, I think I make a motion to advance. Advance may be a good word for it, up to 45000 with the expectations of this 45000 for this project be spent secondly uh, as, as, as the project goes along or so much or the commission decide how much percentage wise they spend to theirs before they start spending this um, and two ways just what Tina said a while ago first out transit gas tax some of it and then some of it up sales tax to be funded both ways so Perhaps instead of advance allocate? Allocate, yeah, okay, okay. I would, would accept that, yes, allocate, yes. 45,000? Yes. Uh, the, the motion I wrote down, I was, a, I got a little bit confused by the, when you were talking about percentages. What I wrote down was uh, for the county to allocate up to $45,000 with county funds spent secondly after grant funds and to be paid from Transient guest tax, or if sales not allowed, sales if not tax. allowed sales tax, yes. Or 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 combination as well. Or combination percentage wise, that I would leave that part of the motion to the commission to decide on how they'd like to do that. And so look, once we look at the exact figure. So transient guest tax and or sales tax yeah. as. Uh, I put this one section, and I forgot to. The city of Hillboro is going to be involved in this as well, and they've committed approximately fifteen thousand. So that'll come down off of that forty-five uh, as well. So that'll lower that number down. They just haven't given me a number. 
because they wanted to know what the county was going to do before. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just throw numbers up in the air. Right. Correct. Right. Right. So they're saying they got they're 15. That's what they're going to spot. Possibly 15 is what the number of so possible the more so accurate number than 30. <laughs> so they want to give more of this. I'm just wondering if we need to go that high. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Donkey, would you be willing to <clears> change your number to? We, we don't want to handicap them from getting stuff. Well, we don't know when the city is going to. Yeah, I was going to say nothing there is committed yet. Yeah, I understand. They have not taken action yet. Okay. Well, they I have just, not taken action. Just saying that number, the, the forty-five is definitely going to come down. I just don't. Right. We believe the forty-five is going to get lowered, and we hope very significantly. Right. But if we're talking about trying to order things today, right. so that sure. we've got comfort that, sure. you know. That's what the 45 would allow us to do. We right. still believe that we'll be able to reduce the number. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Crowfoot. Further discussion? One other item on discussion. No, not this time. I think, I think I'll leave that alone for right now, but we'll, we'll go ahead with this. Any other questions or discussion? Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carried four to say. Now an open comment, since that's been decided already, is we have a pretty good relationship, but I'd like to like to renew that relationship with the city of Hillsboro on the grounds because we do not own the grounds and it's true the land itself the land itself right and stuff and I, I just would like to continue a good working relationship on that ground whatever the county appreciates everything they've done and I hope they appreciate everything we do so thank you thank you all right thank you all very much it truly does mean a lot to all of us oh yeah it's a good project no this is you, awesome. you guys are going to do the work, so. Yeah, we are. We have them too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we know that. So now you have to pull much. the trigger before you have to come back yeah. and ask for more. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I was well. actually just calling me when I was looking for so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much. Yeah. All right. Agenda okay. approval. Uh, Register deeds will not be in, which I believe 10 minutes ago. Uh, we will have an executive session here in just a minute or two. And also want to add an executive session at the end for property acquisition. Are there any other changes to the agenda? We will be moving the administrative items to the end also because we'll have a good time. All right. With that, executive session is for. Let's do this one for potential litigation, please. Be attorney client privilege. I move we move I move that we recess into executive session in order to discuss attorney-client privilege on potential litigation pursuant to KSA 75-4319B for item two consultation with our attorney with attorney-client privilege with the commission, counselor, clerk for five minutes from 12:55 to one o'clock. Read Zoom in this motion chamber. And you second by Commissioner Dalkey. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Mm -hmm. Opposed say nay. Motion carried 5 0. We will be back at 1 o'clock. Will now be recorded. Oh, we good. Are executive We're session. Recording. No decisions Whoa. made. Yeah. Where do you want us? Uh, here? Yeah, you can sit here. Oh, okay. Okay. Thoughts? Right there. Right there. So we can turn our mic around for it. Yeah. I said I heard my brother Winkler. And well, then you won't get off the picture shot. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that Whatever that is, yeah. You can adjust the camera. Here. Breaker. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. well. Good. Okay, we're here from the food bank. Just to kind of, while you're passing that out, I'll just say thank you for your continued support. Uh, for those of you who may not known that since we moved from the alley side of Valley Church up to the abandoned filling station, you've helped us pay our utilities. 
every year, haven't missed a year. Then when we were getting ready to tear down a building at the corner of Cedar and Main, Brother Crowfoot walked into Gene's office when the Dean and I were talking about it, something. Said the commission had just voted to waive the dumping fees for transfer station, and we appreciated that. The specifics of what we're going to talk about, I'm just going to let Gene, Gene take care of that. But thank you, we appreciate it. Okay, on the front part, on the spreadsheet side there, you can see that uh, last year we served 2,445 families. Now, I can't actually say that that was that many different families because they have the option of coming twice a month uh, to the deal. So sometimes, you know, some people come every time they got the advantage to. Some of them maybe only come one time, some of them maybe not none. But, but anyway, we told 2,445 families for a total of 5,171 total people. Now, this was, you know, some or one family, two family, two in the family, four in the family, five and six, you know. So it, we just take whatever it is that they are signed up to the amount in the family. The next item there is, uh, I said donated foods, but uh, that's, that's all the foods that we took in. Uh, and that also includes like 72,000 pounds of food that we got from the food bank, which when I get on the next part here, I'll show you the difference of, of what some of that was. Down at the bottom, we keep track of each town uh, in the county, so you can see Burns, Florence, Gossel, Hillsboro, uh, every town in the county. Tampa is, is very slow. We went nine months there, or almost ten, and didn't have nobody. And then the last two months, November and December, we had one and four people come in. So it uh, it varies, you know, percentage-wise. Your bigger towns, you know, they're going to have the more people. But uh, Florence is right up there, and and uh, Gossel 73, Lincolnville 198, Lost Springs 200. So uh, those are some of the small towns that do come in and and uh, participate about getting the food. If you want to turn your sheet over then on the back side, this is something that the uh, food bank puts out to us, telling us of all <laughs> the food that we got from them and so forth. And then the first column there on the left, if you go down there to, to where the graph is, we got a total of 72,327 pounds from the food bank. And our actual cost for that was $15,079 making it cost per pound of 21 cents. And the fair market value for the same amount would have been $117,170. So our connection with the food bank really makes it to where we can uh, give out this food to people that need it and so forth. Um, the one there in the center at the top kind of tells you bakery products, we got 10,000 pounds. Uh, dairy, 4,400 pounds, dry goods, 30,000, uh, meat and protein, 17,000, uh, produce, 9,794, for a total of the 72,327, and it cost us the $15,079 for the year. So it's uh, it's really a good thing, and, and uh, I think down here in the bottom too, this hunger of Marion County, I'm not sure, uh, popula population fund is secure. We are 11%, statewide is 12%. Population food insecure there. Um, and then the children, 15.5, where the state average is 17.1. So I think we're doing pretty good. Any, there questions? any questions from our, any of that? Has the new building increased the number of people? Hasn't yet. It, it's still running about. Just make your, your life easier. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's so much easier with the more room. I mean, we got shelving. Everything's in its place. And man, those gals can come up here and they can fill out those bags and and have them ready to go. And and it just really is nice. It's a wonderful facility. Yes, it is drive around the country, it's a GMO.
around here, I'd say. Yeah. Have you been in there, Ken? I haven't been in it, but anytime. I watched it going up and yeah, saw yeah. stuff going in. And yeah, anytime you go, you know, if they're open, just stop by and walk through and just kind of take a look of, of how it's set up. And, and we've got all the new freezers and refrigerators in there and stuff now. And, and the heat don't run very often because they put off enough heat in there that it, it keeps it about 65 degrees yeah, most of the time. Till summer. I suppose it's probably around the day. But it's pretty cold outside. Well, so. We need to thank both of you gentlemen plus all the other volunteers that take their time and yeah. provide that service. The grant writers. Are you guys training somebody to take your place? Uh, I'm not going anywhere. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they help you well, the they guy, the guy that hog tied me was the was the city manager. He called me down and he knew I'd been working since we in our church started what we call a shared Sunday, where every, every fourth Sunday every month we get a groceries or we'll accept cash and to the food bank. And he reminded me that nowhere in our in the Bible, which is kind of our guide, that's why we do what we do, because Christ told us to do that. He called somebody's hungry, and feed him. And uh, he said, "There's nothing in the Bible that talks anything about retirement." <laughs> so, I think I'd have to worry about uh, getting along with my wife because that charge nurse kind of took over when we moved in to the gas station, uh, recruited some volunteers, but. Uh, worked up a, a little orientation program and is still there. She is training somebody to replace her. I don't think it's going to happen very soon. <laughs> yeah. they, they just got two people that work their tail off for there. Just maybe as a little reminder, the, the criteria for using the food bank is to live in Marion County. We check that. And then need a little help with your groceries. That's it. We don't check income we don't we've had a few a few people try to game us and that doesn't that doesn't go very long other people take care of that i will have to ask one person that kind of question and you know right now with the price of inflation and everything you know groceries are going out fuel off so those people that's on fixed income do they pay to keep warm or do they pay to get food i would say the need's going to get greater. the need's going to get greater you bet you it's the only way it can go right now. So. Well, we're, the, the main reason we can do what we do, and Gene hit on it, the fact that we're lined up with the Kansas Food Bank in Wichita uh, and the Gene sister's high. <laughs> She's the great writer. You know what you know, it's who you know. Who you know. I mean, keep, what, keep her going. I think, I think we Debbie, all knew that, but we don't have to give away all the secrets. Yeah. <laughs> but Debbie didn't know about grant writing for the kind of facility you wanted to build not to be known. And that's how we built that building. It's, I think there was one grant we applied for and we didn't get it, that right? Yeah. Got all the rest we of it. We got 172000 in grant money toward the $300,000 building. So any questions that we might answer for you? If not, we'll let you get back to the Keep up the good work, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you guys. We appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks Thank you for the, the information. It was very helpful. Okay, you're Thank welcome. You. Hello, Josh. Afternoon. Well, last Wednesday, my driver talked to me and said he was gone. He quit. So Two days notice. Luckily, Amanda, she's doing good. She had to go with a test drive with her a few weeks ago. She's handling everything good. Um, she wanted the position to go back to drive a truck. I was fine with it. So um, I'd like to go ahead and, but I've been paying the drivers. I want to go ahead and keep going at it. Um, you know, if that's kind of where I was standing on that piece of it. So. Um, I do have a salary sheet and a job title change for her. Any comments? I don't 
think there's some that I can make in public personnel. Uh, yeah, I think if you want to discuss the specifics, then you would need an executive session for personnel performance. Mm -hmm. um, I expect the, uh, our department heads to do what they need to do. I, yeah, I don't need to agree or disagree. I'm going to, if it becomes a problem, then the, the department head will have to worry about their position. Is there any nepotism in here? Do we have a nepotism rule? Can we go into executive session yeah, before you go any further? That's what I'm saying. I'm just asking if we do have a nepotism rule. I move we recess in executive session in order to discuss personnel matters and non-elected personnel performance, pursuant to KSA 75-4319B, item one, personnel matters and non-elected personnel performance. With Josh, the commission, uh, counselor, and clerk uh, for five minutes, beginning at 1.15, coming out at 1.20, uh, resuming back in this room. Is there a second? Second. I second by Commissioner Dalkey. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carried 5 0. Five minutes. Get your steps in today. This conference will now be recorded. All right. We are out of executive session. No decisions made. Uh, we do have a salary change for Amanda and Reynolds from 2,442 to 2,773, effective today. Change from transfer station worker one to truck driver. Let's jump back to administrative business. Uh, you should have all received copies of the minutes of February 7th and February 14th. Any additions or corrections to those minutes? If not, is there a motion to approve? A motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Gehring to approve minutes of February 7th and 14th. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Becker. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carried 5-0. Next, we have ratification of disaster declaration. That was also included in your packet from the fire. I should get, I didn't get the re resolution. I'm oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I believe it will be 2208. Let me verify real quick. I'm starting a new year. Yeah, I'm still on 21. Two, but that's kind of seven. That would make a lot more sense. Yes, 2022-08. So we would need a motion to adopt that resolution. All right. Do we have a motion to approve resolution 2022-08 for the disaster declaration? I'll make that motion. Okay, motion by Commissioner Crowfoot, a second by Commissioner Dalkey. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carried 5-0. I'm going to uh, grab everything that I need signatures on Great. here in a minute. And then, uh, so if we want to, I don't know if you want to keep going. And uh, then we can do the signatures in a couple minutes. Sure. 
uh, in your packet, I believe you had a, a letter of support for that is being requested by Tabor College for a, a grant program. And so I'm happy to prepare that letter and have it on yes. a letterhead, but the board would need to approve it and authorize the chairman to sign or the full board can sign, whichever you prefer. Make a motion to authorize the chairman to sign the letter of support for Tabor College. Second. Motion by Commissioner Gary, second by Commissioner Becker for that letter of support. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion to say, opposed, say nay. Motion carried 5 0. We will get that letter going. Okay. How much time do you have? We still have like seven more minutes. So you're you're moving fast. Are we okay to? We're knocking them off. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, but do we have salary sheets? I do have some salary. Uh, yes. I don't, I don't almost, let's, let's leave the uh, least purchase bid for later. Okay. I do have the resolution here for signature. Here's a salary sheet. Okay. We have a salary change for Tina Graney from 2300 to 2638, effective October 12, 21. Change from Administrative Specialist 1 to Administrative Specialist 2. And that would be in the Treasurer's Office. Uh, For, uh, well, for the last several years, we've assisted the Marion County, some Marion County businesses with getting their ads into the Kansas Travel Guide. It's that time frame again. Okay. Um, last year, you went ahead and paid the entire fee out of transient guest tax. That, if we have them done by next Monday, it's $80. After that, the deadline is March 31st. It would be $100 each. And of course, we have not started. So. Um, I don't, if, if the county wants to do that again for for businesses, we're willing to, to work on that and update those listings. Last year you paid the full amount out of transient guest tax. Um, so I'm just wondering if you're wanting to do that again or not. And just a little twist here to make it more fun. In the past, um, City of Hillsboro has done their own through their economic development department, and so as the city of Marion, and neither of those cities have economic development directors right now, to my knowledge. Um, we were not really going to pick up those cities, um, just automatically. But I think the Marion merchants are going to do it. Okay. So get, I don't. They I don't really. Hotel tax. Right. So they have their own. They have their own transit guest tax, right. and so does yeah. the city of Hillsboro. Right. So we wouldn't. The county wouldn't necessarily pay that but it just I don't know how they're facilitating their their own ads this year just that's I just don't know the answer on that. see if they would like to be included on ours and cover themselves that's just a statement Mary and are going to use their own money 
Right, but I mean, they could, right. they could collaborate and bring it all into one, but they don't want to. It would be simpler if we could just do it the way we've done it in the past with those cities doing their own. Yeah. I could reach out to the city administrator and just make sure he's aware of it. As, and city Hill's around there. Just so they're aware of it, um, is both cities aware of this date? I don't know. Yes. That's what I'm saying. I could reach out. Murray and Harrison. Yeah, I can't. I couldn't tell you that. That was wrong. I couldn't either. And Murray's group is not connected to anything. It's all volunteers. Nobody's in charge. That's all. So there's nobody to reach out to. That's right. And we don't have to do this, of course. It's optional, well, but it has, I mean, in the past, we have It's got value. Yeah. I'd entertain a motion to proceed with the advertisement as we've done in the past. Second. Okay, I made the motion. The second by Commissioner Dalkey. Any further discussion? If not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carried 5 0. Okay, so just to clarify, the county will pay the full yes. cost of the As ads. in the past. Okay, all right. Up to $100. Yes. Okay. And with that, we're at 1 30, which means time to get up again. Uh, uh, did you see the little eye? Oh, yeah. that, that, was, that was awesome. This is a long one. So, Brad, the first is this all under one? Mm -hmm. And it's for potential. Mm -hmm. I move that we recess into executive session in order to discuss potential litigation pursuant to KSA 75 43 19B uh, for item two consultation with our attorney, attorney client privilege for potential litigation uh, with commission counselor clerk uh, beginning at one uh, you'll also have uh, another party by party yeah and I don't know who all they intend to have in so in terms of naming them right. you're gonna have to invite them in but it will be representatives uh, of APM okay representatives of APM uh, and legal counsel for and their legal counsel so that's the best I can do at this moment Till they identify themselves. I'm sure Ben Bigham and Scott Schillings will both be on, but I don't know if they're client. Okay. And I did not ask for sure if they had confirmed whether that was occurring or not. Right. So I think just just saying a representative of legal counsel. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we will identify once they're invited in. We will go in at 1.30 and come out at 2.45. So we're in an hour. We break that up in case this resolves more quickly. <laughs> Two, half, 30 minutes? Yeah, let's start with that. Okay, we'll go into a 30 minute with uh, going in at 1.30, coming out at 2 o'clock, resuming in these chambers. That is the motion. Second by Commissioner Gary. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nay. Motion carried four to one. We will be back at 2 o'clock. All right. When we come back in, we'll We're come back in. in with this body and we can invite them back in if we need to. We're going, We're going back to discuss into executive session. Yeah. Okay. This conference will now yep. be recorded. All right. We're out of executive session. Uh, no decisions made. Final. Did you want to announce no. that Bryce was invited in during yes. the yes. session? Yes. We need yes. to do that as well. Thank you. Bryce you can't was invited in five minutes. Well, it depends on whether or not we go back into an executive. Okay. That's up to the board. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to ask for a five minute executive session with just the commission. Right. Yes. Brad. Uh, I move that we recess the executive session in order to discuss attorney client privilege potential litigation pursuant to KSA 75-4319B for item two, consultation with our attorney, attorney client privilege with Bryce, um, Brad, Tina, the commission for five minutes. So, okay, and second by Commissioner Gary, so we will go into recess at 2 or 3, come out at 2 or 8. Can you vote? Oh, yeah. oh, I have I have oh. favor, say aye. Aye. <laughs> Okay. Say Camera's on. Yep. Not yet. I guess this conference will now be recorded. All right, we're out of executive session. No decisions made. 
We're going to head back into another executive session. I do come to the executive session in order to discuss <laughs> client privilege and potential litigation pursuant to KSA 75-4319B for item two, consultation with our attorney, attorney client privilege with um, county engineer, counsel, clerk, commission, and the APM representatives and their counsel for 20 minutes, starting at 2.10, coming out at 2.30. Is there a second? So, uh, second by Commissioner Becker, any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Aye. I heard two ayes, three ayes, four ayes, five ayes, five to zero. We recess in executive oh, session. I opposed it. Who, who opposed and who voted <laughs> for this one? I heard ayes. I heard no ayes. Everybody nays. said aye. So oh. you're. Well, his was on the no side. Days. Yes. I, didn't, I don't see much value in going back in the dock. Okay, four to one. Would you want to go into like 15 minutes of your report? We've got 15 minutes. I left my stuff downstairs, but okay. I'm just trying to find But you have that memory. You can just do it. Uh, I have we'll, some stuff. We'll finish up a couple of our ideas. Okay. This conference will yes. now be recorded. <laughs> All right, we're out of executive session. No, no decisions made. Um, our next item on the agenda is at 2.45 with the day and drive discussion. <laughs> Until then, maybe we'll try to wrap up a couple other administrative items. I think they're all out here. Yeah. Well, well I don't want to start early. Yeah, but they can't start early. We, we still need all, one other item that yeah. we need to handle as well. we come down Yellow Road and make the turn. That's why it goes to a 245 seat county counselor. Oh, you have my privilege. Line. Yes. Okay, well, <laughs> I, will, I will back off my <laughs> So. Mr. County Counselor, what would you like to say? Um, that's fine. She she still, sit down. still in your slot. Just told her she could sit down. <laughs> I asked Sharon if she could be in attendance as well. Um, in terms of the, the turbine project, there are the uh, security proposals that have been made. I assume, have they, I think they did, right? Part of the comprehensive development. Yes. Um, and in terms of our agreement, there are certain funds that they have to pledge as security. Um, and Sharon had sent those to me. I think Tina did as well. I've reviewed all those consistent with our agreement. The, the magnitude of those numbers are, are correct. Uh, I don't really have any issue with those unless something changes about scope or condition of projects. So they are, um, th those are all noted and correct. What we don't have yet, and I don't know that I would necessarily have expected them to do that, um, are the sources of those uh, revenue streams or guarantees. I want to know where they're coming from. Uh, generally, they're always going to use a reputable source, but sometimes what I perceive to be uh, an adequate letter of credit isn't necessarily the same as what they provide. So this is uh, just as a brief report on this. Don't have a problem with the numbers that have been presented to us and proposed as what they will uh, will do as part of the comprehensive development agreement, but we will want confirmation of, of, of the pledges and from where before we accept them. So that was the other thing I needed to cover, Sharon. I don't know if you had anything else on that. But. No, just the, how do we transmit that confirmation back to our Orsted? Would that come through council since that was part of the... Since it's part of an agreement that's already accepted, yeah, I think basically I can write that confirmation um, and send that back to them. But I wanted to make sure you were aware of it in advance and that you were doing that. Because again, the approval of what those actually are as submissions will still come. And at that point, I think I will ask for um, board approval. Uh, yeah, those is the final. Is this commitment. stuff that's already been decided, Sharon? Or, or I mean, is this with the other company? This is what the downs. Sorry. So, part of the comprehensive development agreement with. Expedition Wind. <laughs> which was resolution 2019-21. It it had different sections in there for the pilot agreement, road agreement, decommissioning agreement, and then certain securities that would be due prior to the notice to proceed date, and certain things that were due before construction began. So. And those were all outlined in the agreement. 
at the point of execution, which has been approved, but it set the standard for uh, the, the level of security to be presented, generally the time frames within which to do it, um, before any kind of notice to proceed could be executed, approved and executed. Um, they have now presented those numbers in terms of county engineer support and cost reimbursements. Road security is the big one. Um, communications interference security, and then the decommissioning portion of things per turbine. Um, all of those numbers have been provided to us in their proposal for the level of security to be presented. And they've also, uh, in one of the ones that I had mentioned whether it was in the form of a letter of credit or otherwise. Uh, your cash or whatever it may be. Cash on, we're going to approve pretty readily, but the letter of credit or any other form of security, we're going to want to see and approve, review and approve in advance. But the, the, right at this point, what we wanted to do is communicate to them, fine, your numbers appear to be in order, uh, you can proceed to go ahead and, and get the, the security corresponding to each one for us then to review before those are finally approved. And then we move along with that and give them something, you know, saying yes, we're good with that, um, and then approve it. It would be formal action at that time. Their their expected final notice to proceed date should come around May, so we're coming up on that deadline, and they wanted to make sure that these these numbers were consistent with what the commission is expecting. And if you'd like, just for your peace of mind, I can send the sections of the, the comprehensive agreement that apply to each and every one of these with the amounts that they've proposed so you can also see uh, that they correspond and you can keep them in your file if you wish. Is there a certain amount for road agreement already? I mean, not already. I mean, they don't have a notice to proceed yet, but the amount that they will have in place is $2 million. And that covers a number of things, but generally, the typical things you would anticipate when you say roads, that's where it comes from. If they fail to perform, or we have to interject and say there's something that has not been done in a Is this just a bond they're setting up in case they don't perform? Is that more or less what you're telling me? Yes. Certain non-performance kinds of things. Others are just a, a backup in the event we incur expenses um, that really are, are attributable to the project uh, that they need to pay and we're not getting it from them in a timely way gives us a source to go ahead and make the claim and then settle the dispute later. Right, I think, I think each of those different securities were set up a little bit different yes. in each section. So like one of them is to be held by the county and we use it as it's needed according to that document and then if it needs to be replenished then we can go back to but it keeps a minimum standard in place all of these are a form of either security or indemnification and they, you're right depending upon which one it is they're handled a little bit differently all the way from the simple letter of credit and i say simple they're not so simple uh, to uh, to what amounts to a, a cash reimbursement. Well, just I think Kent and I was really through all the all the time of hassle over the roads. I mean, we just yeah. uh, just where I want to try to keep it smooth as, as well. I mean, no matter what, because that got to be such. Uh, we, want to, we want to make sure that the face of the commission is is always ahead, and Sharon does a good job of that. Yeah, give us plenty of time if we had to make any type of considerations on anything before anything is completely cut. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what this heads up is about. The the road security is based upon past experience. The amount and the magnitude yeah. of that was um, based upon scope and tenor of the project was established with some significant engineering input to put us in a position we hope provides adequate security in the event we have any of the same experiences again. Yeah. Okay. And, and we can send this resolution 
back to you through mm -hmm. email along yeah. with the outline of yeah. what section it talks about these securities so that you can look over. And I think that's a good sure idea to do just to go down. Okay. So I'll do that. Very good. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, I'm done. For the moment. Thank you, well, Sharon, did you want to talk about those two agreements that were in the packet, the one for the county yes, well, tax sale? It's a good point. And then the one for the pavement pros. Those were the two agreements that we have for approval today. I wanted to make sure that the local council had reviewed yeah. it. And then, um, on the uh, we've approved um, for the services of Kelly Law. Uh, and their contract, I think, was included in your packet. It's a six-page document. Fairly straightforward. Uh, section, I don't have it pulled up again, 1.7 uh, deals with some of the operative portions of it that I guess I wanted to make sure you were aware of. If you'll recall, I made the phone call before the date that, thank you, that we had, uh, yeah, 1.7 on page 2. 1.7.1, 1 .1, 0.2, 0.3, and 0.4. If you go through those, you will note that there is not an assurance in the document of um, reimbursement for or uh, consideration of a zero sum game for the county in the event of the loss. That's the only thing, in, and again, that isn't always in these. Uh, we had another um, potential candidate who gave you that assurance, and yes, there's does have that um, in it. I looked. So this was after the fact. I mean, I, this, it's not something that you're compelled to put in here. The contract itself uh, generally covers the, uh, the term. And again, you'll also notice you don't have a specific term ending because it's based upon a condition precedent event. You know, when we get everything completed, the letters of distribution, et cetera, are done, then that particular contract is complete. We were talking about a one year, for example. It doesn't say it in that way. I'm not uncomfortable with that because this is based upon um, a, a contingency and event occurring, and they will have completed their services at the point where that occurs. And that's a fairly bright line document that you're going to get, as we always do. So that was the only other thing. But as to this, if you would like that in here, um, then I'm happy to go back and talk with her about what language we can agree upon to do that. Uh, but that would, I didn't, I didn't necessarily want to even go back and start negotiating something I didn't have the authority to do. What's the commission's feeling? Do you want that clause in there, or is that something that you want to pursue? This is the one, really a one time contract, right? Yeah, what one it comes down to is right. having a year put in there and really doesn't make any difference. Because we could say, okay, well, we don't like that contract. We can always go back to the other one next year. And this is just a matter of on this uh, this event, on this set of foreclosures, if you want something in there that, well, we went over and, and we uh, exceeded um, what we gained in the way of uh, revenue stream on this, is there an adjustment potential? Well, it would be nice to say that that won't happen, but it definitely could. It will. <laughs> yeah, there'll be one or two more. So, is that an indication you would like the clause explored? I, I would. I'd be in favor of the clause. Okay. okay. At least explore. Okay. Yeah. If she doesn't wish to do that, she. It's funny. Right. I just wanted to. Right. That was the only as thing the, I had. The calendar. Yeah. No, that's not. The rest of it, the, yeah. it's very standard. I had no real issues with the contract. Yeah. Yeah. We will explore the one. Let's hold on to that one for 2.45. Thank you, Tina. I said we can do it in rights to that. I'd like a physical copy for most of us. All right, we would be ready for the Dan Drive discussion. Thank you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. She's been down here. She's got a coat here. She's sitting down. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I'll just be right there.
Which would you rather hear from first? Okay. Um, the information that I found out was essentially given back to you um, in that last couple weeks. Um, it's kind of a, uh, to answer the question, I think there's, there's two separate answers. Uh, can the end of Dan Drive be blocked off or whatever else? Yes. Whether it is by the individual landowners or the county, either one. The county, I believe, would have the authority to put a gate basically still on the plat, at the end of the plat, where that would be. Um, but again, maybe that's up to Brad. The second thing that is probably the most confusing part about it is, how about the rest of it? Um, we, the information shows a 30 foot, or 33 foot wide, if you want to say roadway, continuation of Dan Drive down to, to Lakeshore Drive. That has never, as far as I know, been developed or whatever else down to that point. Uh, as I said before, if the commission wants to continue that road, it's going to take quite a bit of work in order to build the roadway down through the bottom where the rock is and stuff like that. Now, that, that deals with the roadway and um, Vicky's driveway uh, is, is pretty much an easy solution as well, just blocking the top off. I guess the big issue is the legal status of where, if this was a meets and bounds survey, um, it's not platted, what is the legal status of that plus the 33 foot roadway that as far as I know was never specifically noted as a 33 foot roadway other than these people's 30 foot easement on their property. So I guess that's probably going to fall more to Brad or whatever else as to how to we resolve or give you input as to what to do. So did I say anything that was no. confusing or whatever no, that's, else? That's helpful in terms of the overview of it. Okay. I went through these and I this has come up before obviously in certain circumstances and I anticipate it coming up again because we have six different locations that I can find and that Rebecca could find uh, that are similar. They And it's it's in that area. and, and um, I have to go by what's been filed of record and what's public uh, in the way of information on this that's legally binding in any way, shape, or form. What Bryce is describing in terms of the, the gate, for example, yes, we can put one, we can put one at the end of what is our platted easement, yeah. area that is an easement of ours if we so choose. Um, but there isn't really a great necessity for us to do this because from that point forward it's private property. Um, and the private property owners in each one of these cases, I can pretty much say, based upon the filings, have the right to restrict as they see fit. And the liability for uh, traversing across it falls to them, unfortunately. I cannot tell them that, um, that even though sometimes it's the public that goes ahead by habit and uses some of these roadways, that the county has any liability for that beyond that flat or public easement and even there there's some question about the way it's worded it could be done better um, so the long and the short of that is really it it for the most part and I talked to Sharon about it today as well there's the planning and zoning portion of this unless we reach an agreement with these property owners that the county wishes to take on some um, liability for this uh, or some joint type of maintenance or something, um, it really remains a private property uh, <coughs> concern and an issue. Um, and not one that we have. Doesn't mean you can't, if you so choose. But 
how we did that would either be by way of the standard we're going to make it a public roadway either by public dedication from the private property owner or by eminent domain which means we're taking on more road um, and they're going to look very different than they do right now in terms of width and composition um, and engineering uh, I drove out because I was curious on some of it and um, uh, there's no it's going to be like the one that we talked about not terribly long ago where the county did reach an agreement with with certain property owners adjacent to and contiguous to a roadway that gives them all access to their property some of you may recall um, but it was specified on the agreement that only after they bring it up to minimum standard by county uh, specifications will we accept it they can pub attempt to publicly dedicate but we don't take it until it reaches that point and then from that point on we maintain it so there is an agreement in place for us to take on a roadway uh, in those cases but it, it has certain conditions that must be met first um, and those folks again it's it's an expensive process to get a base down and get it wide enough and get the drainage in and everything done which is what would have to happen before the county would accept it there so that remains a private property uh, roadway with contiguous property owners have control of it and that does create its own headaches at times if not the same person owning all of it but anyway that's what I have found and, and it's a uh, it's not just one property uh, we've got this with six of them uh, in different locations in that area now I do have one question Brad the the uh, deed for them over there does call for a 30-foot easement so is that 30-foot easement outside of their property or is that because if that is not a platted dedicated road does the property owners now go to the center of where that should be I guess where, where does that determine there is not an absolute in terms of the title standards um, that is generally going to be by agreement between us and that property owner okay. Thus, my earlier statement that it could have been written better. Yeah. Well, um, and I mean, I think that's what they've all said. As long as they have their access to what they want or what they need, but again, that comes down to that legal standard. Yeah. So. I would want to see us improve that if we could, by you know, in, as a joint agreement, because the way it's written right now, you don't have a clear delineation mm -hmm. of where it is, and and that again is in each one of those cases, it was not properly, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of to a standard. It's not properly written. Sure, did you have anything you'd like to add? <laughs> Nothing more than what Bryce and Brad have already said. I mean, it's it's platted. It was never accepted by the county. <clears throat> it's still. Yeah, until, again, just in terms of general process, we can plat all day long but until it's finalized, final plan is filed, and it's accepted and approved by a majority vote of this body after review of planning and zoning these days, um, and filed a record, it doesn't exist. It's not finished. And so we're still kind of at that point of what we would call a preliminary plan. Um, and that's a little bit of a misnomer, but kind of in that category. So I think one of the questions is, is it still private property or is it public right-of-way that was not accepted for maintenance by the county? I still consider it private property the way they're written. That was the first question I was looking for is how do we handle that because it has some um, impact on the property owners in terms of well what's the liability here and and I'm not saying that the county might not be advisable to address that in some way um, uh, at all I'm just saying where we stand today if I had to give an answer I don't consider that fully it's not been fully accepted we didn't cross the finish line with it so it's still hanging out there and that defaults to what I consider to be private property. Okay. Uh, I guess the question that I would have of Vicki and everybody else is um, Obviously, the being up on, on top there where the plat ends, and we put a gate and or whatever up there, whether it's we or they, um, is that something that you would rather have a 
swing gate or whatever else as compared to uh, immovable objects. I mean, we could get a whole bunch of rocks and things like that to where people wouldn't be able to drive through there. Um, but I mean, uh, it's probably not the bicycles or motorcycles or whatever. I mean, I don't know if there's any motorcycles you use it or not, but you're basically working about the, talking about the big, you know, motorized vehicles, the cars and trucks and stuff like that. So anyway, that's, and I guess that brings up the liability on our part is if the commission chooses to put a barricade up or, or whatever obstruction is on the, on the platted part, then we would assume the liability for that. Yes. But if they put it on, on well, at that point or they put it up, then they would assume that liability. It butts up against each other. We've yes. got a contiguous track with a single line. Yeah. Depends on which side of that line something goes up, or both for that matter. Yeah. And then signage also. Yeah. Um, we, we can eliminate some of the issues with, with some signage in terms of private property or different things that we can utilize that would meet the standard for giving adequate notice to the public. Um, and a lot of that comes down to a little bit of strategic planning. Do we have a need to do something with the rest of that easement and, and get the rest of that plat in a place where, no, it isn't fully platted, no, we don't have a public roadway, but we do have the easement confirmed. And then by agreement, this is what we'll do in terms of management there or control and signage and those kinds of things. And I, if we do it in one, I think we look at all of them because all of them should be fixed in fairness to the right. county and the property owners. Sure. You're saying Vicki should put a gate in and make a fence to cover the easements so people won't drive around the gate. That's it. I mean, that's yeah. one of the obvious solutions yeah. that could trying, be done. Trying to make it simple. Yeah. yeah. We would like yeah. to have you ask us what we think should well, be done or what we would like to that be was done. The next step, we yeah. gave the staff has given their report, so now uh, Ricky's up front. We'd like to hear from you, and then we'd like to hear from the public, too, as, as your thoughts. Well, so. I would like to have my public, or my private property back. Yes, absolutely. I've never had that be private. <laughs> yes. Paying taxes on it, yeah. and the public is going through it. I sat there this morning and saw somebody just blast through there probably 35, 40 miles an hour. And my grandsons would have been out there. Right. Uh, if, if we go but, with the option of a fence, what are your thoughts on the fence? Or barricade that, that is fine I, I guess my other concern is then if, if that is blocked off how does Ken and Bonnie get down to Lakeshore on their easement how do we find out where their easement is since it's so vague so that can be constructed the one thing I didn't do and I, and I would to, get to answer that question with some reliability is call a surveyor and have them pull it up and tell me what they would suggest. Mm -hmm. um, because there is enough there in the way of legals for us to be able to ascertain, I think, sufficiently um, where that is in terms of your question. Mm -hmm. um, then some of it will, depending on the answer to that, will become private property owner uh, decisions as to how they maintain or get through, you know, on, the, on what's platted, if we put something in and say, you know, public access ends, we're doing it with what gets you to that point, to the public access, mm -hmm. and the private property from there, how they, it's like owning a section and, and figuring out, well, got to be some way to get onto my property, so where's the culvert? You know, those kinds of things, and this is answered in many. I have a question. Is our piece of property that's there on the north end of Den of the of the of the Dan Drive? Are we the only property owner that has the easement on our deed that goes across Vicky's property? I didn't look at it for that reason. That's it easy looks to like out. It, it, it looks one. like theirs is because yeah. I've got. It, that's it's it's what. Uh, yes. There's a dominant and a subservient easement in those cases is what they're referred to as depending on which property it is. You would hold the what's referred to as the dominant, meaning I get to use your property so that I'm not landlocked or so that I can, can access mine, okay? And that's perpetual in nature and it generally runs with the land. I did note that there's a statement to that effect. It's consistent with that description on the title work on the properties. I did not look at, at where it's located or how, I didn't 
It's big. It's totally big. Yeah. yeah that's, that's my right concern. Here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that's right here. What, as I was reading through all of this, I well, I'll leave that alone. If we were I don't know to choose them. to give yeah. up that easement, if we would choose to give up that easement, would it make us have to do some legal work and have our t our title t our title changed? Yeah, because you've got a cloud on it as it is, well, yes. I say cloud. You have a right at this point that's not properly defined, as right. I read it. So if you came in and sat out and said, what do I do about this? And said, well, we, we need to get it surveyed and determine and hopefully do it you know, with a, a, a mutual agreement with the other property owner. Mm -hmm. This is where our easement is and get that filed at record in the proper way. If you give it up, if you say, well, I'm just going to quit claim that away or I'm going to go ahead and and abandon that easement. Well, you got to have some way to get there, so we're going to have to have you not landlocked if that was the place that you wanted access. I said I was going to come here and just not listen, and I didn't mean just listen and not <laughs> say anything, but I think we need to get down to the nitty gritty of us people that live out there every day, day in and day out, how we feel about our neighbors, how we feel about the people that are coming through there that don't have to go through there. And I think Ken and I will both agree that at this point, we feel like the safety of those two little children that live down there on the end is far more important than that easement is. We will have to go a little further out to go around the back way and go out on Gillum Road, but it's not impossible. But replacing those boys would be. The other thing that I would suggest, because a lot of clients, I, I hear that same thing, and it's laudable, and I think that's great. Remember that that dirt will be there long past the time you and I are around. Exactly. And so you're going to have property owners who are successors to you who may feel differently. There may not be two small children on there later on, and that access that you currently have may be something that someone else will find very valuable, and it will produce a, a different result in terms of sale or value of property later on. So you want to be... I agree with what you're saying, and that, that matches the circumstances right now, but you want to take into account what's going to work for all of us in perpetuity as best we can tell it. Because when you're dealing with land, it's always there. We're all gone, and it changes, the circumstances change over time with who uses it and how they use it and how they like to use it and what they think is convenient. Just saying that as a caveat, you want to kind of at least keep that in mind. But you can also sometimes have cake and eat it too, you can set it up so that you close off that easement. It's your easement. If at that point you want to say, we established where it is, but we aren't going to use it, we're going to block it off for the safety of those who live on the property, you can do that. So that's why I get back to the earlier question about who owns it. If it's the county, then we make that determination. In this instance, as badly as some of those descriptions are written, they're still an easement there. I just can't tell you exactly how that lies, and I'll have to have a surveyor say whether they can or cannot. I hope they can say, well, I think I can give you an opinion, and that's what we want is a certified opinion on that, and then you can determine what you do with it, and if they can't, it needs to be addressed, because you've got a cloud on that property on a, a subservient easement. You've got a right, but we just can't figure mm -hmm. out where it is. You know? And I want them to have that is. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think you've got what you have here are property owners who I think are willing to work with each other, and you're right. I think you guys sit down and have a conversation about it to start with and say, well, what do we want? Let's begin with that and then see if it can be worked to achieve that. And the county has to close the room? Have to? No. Can we? Yes. On the, on the platted side of where we have, well, we probably can, I should say it that way, because depending upon how the easements are written, in some cases, they're not, um, they're, they're allowing us to put structural kinds of things in subsurface. Well then, no, we don't have control over the surface. I think in others, we do. With the neighborhood it's going, you know. Yeah. I think they want to do that. Yeah, and well, and again, well, saying this, what we, that we would close, what actually, you next? actually ends in somebody's house, that rest is. Yeah. Not actually a road. It's a, it's just it's an alley. It's right. a, they just created it. As best I can tell. Right. So we we can't actually close that. We would have to close it prior to somebody's house. Now now one one I say salute. Uh, um, I would option. call it a simple solution or option would be to keep people from driving down through her driveway right. 
is to put some sort of blockade. She, you have a telephone pole or kind of up there. If if it would have to be her doing it, being private property, could just put whatever she wants to across there so that you have fixed object, fixed object, she couldn't drive around it. That would solve the problem of people driving through there. But it's still, and it would, as far as the easement, it wouldn't address that, but then these people obviously would still not be able to get down to Lakeshore. Again, that would all fall on uh, Vicki, obviously being her private property, I'm guessing. So, I mean, that's where, like I said, that's, a, a, I'd say a simple option, but then it does affect your access or again the gate or whatever else and then if you put a gate up there and you want them to have them go through there well they'll have to go out there and open unlock whatever the case may be and that'll be great up until somebody decides hey i'm going to go through there i'm either going to go over the gate or through the gate or cut but the lock or whatever yeah, yeah. that'll so, happen too well and, and honestly <laughs> the other thing well, that we I know probably, yeah, don't we? yeah and the other thing that i've said is is honestly uh at the bottom of uh, Vicky's Drive just coming off a of lake shore she has a sign that says private property uh, and it's a regulatory sign mm -hmm. so it comes down to the fact is that is um, something that could be regulated with uh, law enforcement but again you've got to have somebody there at the time to see that and I don't know legally speaking if she could set up a camera mm -hmm. if she could get that information and then it's just a question of admission in a, in a yeah. court of law, yeah. you know, the trail cams, and, yeah. and if someone has sufficient information to show someone violated yeah. your rights on a, on a private mm -hmm. property basis. But, but ultimately that comes down to the fact that it's going to be her investment as basically. well, you know. Yeah, so. because it's not something that we regulate yeah, sure. in that circumstance. Is there a dead ends sign like at the top of the hill that indicates that Dan Drive stops, or could we put one? There's not, not, not there at this time now. now but that's something that we would put. Now again, it's like anything else, it doesn't matter what we put up for signs if people don't want to pay attention. Right. Mm -hmm. We put well, one out of Lake Shore that's Drive that's too. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't road ahead. Right, so like people that. don't, yeah. or private drive or whatever. So Or public access yeah. hands, I've seen those used yeah. as well. Yeah. It sounds like when you come around the corners at Gillum, they're on the north, yes. and it turns and goes south, Dan Drive. Yes. Right. But the topography is such that there's a hill. So yeah. if you get to that, that intersection at Dan and Gillum, you may not know that that's a dead end. So right. it would probably be a good idea to put some dead end signs yes. there. And then the, the property owner has a right to put a gate or whatever they want to do on their side of it since it's not a public access. You put a fence across yeah. it. And then that wouldn't affect their easement or their deeds. We doubt about it, what your intentions are. But then it would be on the property owner that's to <laughs> charge for trespassing yeah. if people continue to take that to the public road. If someone wins the lottery, you can go out there and plat this in final form and then lay in the roads and give them to the county, which the county would basically have to, well, wouldn't have to, but would likely accept if they were all done a couple million dollars later. But it would solve all the problems because that's what the plat <laughs> yes, does for us. <laughs> yeah, and then we can regulate the all the signage and everything else. I don't mean to be yeah. facetious, but that's how we don't get into this discussion and why those plats are useful. In this particular instance, that all ended uh, too soon. Um, and so now it's really private property owners working this out with each other in terms of their wishes and, um, and the county recognizing where it has control and we can do the signage and that kind of thing there, but that's not going to solve all the problems as I see them. I mean, there's going to be if you close there. the road, would you say that would solve the problem? Just close the road so nobody can go down there. I, I don't know that statutorily we can close it because it would create a landlocked tract. It That's actually create a couple of landlocked tracts. The, 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 there's some things we can gate, but in terms of absolute closure, I have to look at it again because I'm trying to envision it. I think we do landlock several property owners. We, we can't do that any more than private properties have a right to. If you, you, know, so if you own a postage stamp in the middle of a section, you have a right to get to yes. it. And that us allows you to that have corner. a easement. Yeah. But we're not landlocked. We can no. go out the other way. Yeah, so that's possible. Nobody's landlocked. No. Do they touch Gillen? Does their access or their property touch Gillen? Yes. All of them. Does Mr. Yates' it comes, property? It comes east off of the, from over there by the airport. Comes east, 
turn the corner south and goes to the south end of our property. That's where it's no longer platted. So if, if this, is this Dylan. That's Dan. If Dan Drive were to be vacated, which I don't think it legally could by state statute, it yeah, would landlock this property, which I think is Dan Yeah, Davies. And then That's this theirs. is their property. Their property doesn't touch Gillum, so it would landlock both of those. Yeah, we can't do that. Yeah. Unfortunately. No, we're not landlocked there. It's the cul-de-sac. Yes. So, with, does your property with, touch with, Gillum? With con, no. With that, us, that. what am I trying to say here? Smith. Contiguous property, you know, all the properties would touch okay. that cul de sac. Well, there's two of us on Dan Drive. This is the front of our property right here. Mm -hmm. I guess I'd That's have to look at the map. Maybe there's a way to do it. Two of us on Dan Drive. Uh, a cul de sac. That does fit the came yeah. in through That's here it. and around the, the corner the just this far. Really see, our property is here. So uh -huh. It's not going to provide people going through. It's not going to stop people going through. Oh, all right. Then it comes. But anyway, that's. That's what the problem is. Though. We don't. We're not landlocked. We don't have to go out this way. We can go out this way. So you'd only be able to vacate a portion of Dan Drive. Yeah, what about Vinduska? They'd be landlocked. Just at the. If you vacated just north of their property, right. they would have that 15 foot section of they the vacated Dan, portion once you're past of Dan. the last. Right. Sounds like a counting engineer. Problem. <coughs> well, the, so. the if we go to where the end of Dan Drive is, I believe that is kind of where the little hill is. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. well, more or less where the fire hydrant is. Okay. Yeah. That, that is, is the fire. end so of the platted ground. Yeah. In which the, makes a natural to obstruction it. to put a fence or barrier or whatever else across it. Now I've also understand that that water line does go east or south whatever you want to say the hill. Hill. goes down the hill the, so as you're going down the hill it's on the right side yes of the driveway and, and obviously not knowing where that is i was assuming that that would be put in under an easement somewhere mm -hmm. um you know the rural water district yeah. or, or the city that would water. be solvable i mean i'm sure that's well, probably but already there. i'm just saying is that they they took whatever legal that it may be to say hey we're going to put this water line down there um, I have talked to the surveyor, Steve Brosmer. In fact, is he was one that actually staked Vicky's land. Well, I have one of his guys, maybe, but um, that has actually been staked out there. You can see where it is. But again, it comes down to the idea where's that 30 foot easement? Yeah. Um, and again, I don't, whatever that is. And all I can do is ask him, can you figure this out? He's, he's either going to tell us yes or no. Uh, he, he, he's already told me, he says it's basically a remnant that was left like over. Yep. Yeah. That, and he says I, he's all familiar with Norm. Norm Bowers was actually out there in the state part of it as well. Um, and they, it's, it's like you said, it was just kind of poof, mm -hmm. it just disappeared. They, they, did the, um, they did the plat of that area up on top, and the area between there and those houses down in there was just kind of left. It's so, the first time we run into that. Yeah. Um, well, it's fixable. I mean, in terms of being able to do that, there's some investment some elements of that. Yeah. But um, it, it starts with what the property owners want. We know what we can do. I mean, that I can yeah. pretty reliably say in terms of where we can close it off. That will not solve everything. As a matter of fact, we may not be able to even do it in certain instances, depending upon what it does to certain property owners. Sounds to me like county council. That part is. So we come to a resolution. I don't know. The, no. Well, I I don't know if there is a resolution <laughs> because uh, there is well, one. I could have predicted. It's right. uh, yeah. 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 private yeah. property on this yeah. Well, that's basically that's basically what he's saying. It's up to these folks here to determine what they want to do. If they want to keep the access, whatever else, to put a gate up, or ask the county to put a gate on. Um, our portion. Our portion. Our portion. Or do they want to leave it like it is? And again, it's as far as people driving through there, that's a fairly simple fix. Just a, a short little place down there at the bottom to keep us breath through. But you're still going to have people that are going to drive down and they're going to have to turn around. So yeah, to do sign. Well, I mean, yeah. They're, they're going to drive yeah. around it too, the motorcycle. Well, they, they wouldn't. Where it'd be at down there, they either drive down through the ditch and through the trees and stuff like yeah. that or through her carport. And I don't think they would want to do either one of those. You might be surprised. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, but anyway, again, I, that's the information I have. It's the information Brad has. I don't know just, if there's a... Just to be clear, this was a, a road easement. Don't know. Yes, sir. 
or is it a utility it's easement? It's, 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 it's all it says is they have a 30 foot easement on their property. That's all it says. And, as and far as one place, it could be just a yeah. utility easement. Yeah, at one point it says public. And if you go back to the old yeah, it is. case law, that's not defined. I mean, that's either a surface or subsurface or both. And now we require under the title standards that you specify that's just what it is that you have and with location and usage. Ingress, egress, uh, subsurface for utility purposes only, other types of drainage, I mean, it, it has to be specified. It doesn't say for ingress, egress. I thought it said that. I don't recall that it, well, maybe it does. I don't. Now, the other question that just, um, I say minor thing, their, they, their property says an easement up on top down to Dan Drive. Now the people that live down on Dan Drive to the south of you, they have a rock path going besides their house. Hollers. Okay, is it, whoever it is. Yes, I know. Martin Hollers. But they have, a, they have a path that goes back there, and I'm assuming that Close that's that. already on their property as well? Well, that's what we thought and still, until we went over to the deeds office. Okay. And we're wondering if where the survey was originally that there is more land to the west by that map there that is still it, on my property yeah GIS, that i didn't realize the gis doesn't correspond to it yes it's, and, and that's 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 what i'm saying is so you know if that easement technically doesn't is legally not there well then now does that mean that that would see hall hollers hollers mm -hmm. property does that now come up to the middle of that and, and vicky's come up to that and again with no easement by yeah. so i i guess i mean i could call i could call the survey ranger i'm sure he would love to to but he's not going to basically give you any more information than what we've talked and about. that's i had not uh, not asked him yeah. so i didn't know what kind of response we'd get there but that's what I know so far based upon so all of them. where do we go to find concrete answers on these property lines? I think you create them in this particular instance because most of these are private property situations. Mm -hmm. the, the contiguous property owners, those of you who are out there, and we hope you can reach agreement, say so this is what we'd like to see happen, then that can be facilitated because we can go ahead and create the survey that creates particular easement and what it's for and how that's done and where it goes um, and then determine from there we already kind of know to some pieces of this with concrete answers in terms of well there is a, a platted area such as it is and we could go ahead and either get that finalized or uh, we that would have to be done by the property owners but um, but like we can take part of it and treat it as publicly dedicated for um, these roadways and if somebody on that property the county controls it need to put up a gate that's something we can do those are concrete answers we can give mm -hmm. but once you get past that onto the private property that's what I was saying when this all started at the beginning of this discussion it really comes down to what the private property owners want to do now I, would like, treat it that way. Sorry. now I would like to say too that if we do go down that road of the plat and everything else and they want to put a road back in there I've also talked about it's going to take a substantial investment of getting rid of the concrete and stuff that's there now, putting in a drain pipe, and then that still means that people could be zipping through there. However, they wouldn't be right next to your house. Mm -hmm. They would be farther over mm -hmm. where it would be. But again, you know, that's you know, again just an option down the road, but it's not going to help the people that are zipping around through there. The fact is, it would probably be easier for them to zip through there if it's going to be more of a straight line. So, right. But right. like I said, at least. That would solve your problem of the people getting or not being able to get to your driveway. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I guess, like Brad said, it kind of leaves it up to you guys what you want to determine. If you want to, I can I can get our county surveyor out there, or meet in here or something to that effect. He could give you the same information that we've talked about. But again, it, like Brad said, it still comes down to the fact is as a um, as a pri as private property as it stands. It's ultimately going to take your lead to figure out what you guys want to do. Mm -hmm. so. and, and what type of barricade may also depend on the improvement district's easements for the mm -hmm. water and sewer. They're still going to have to have access. Yeah. And there's also a fire hydrant down in there. Yeah.
And I don't know, is that, is that, uh, is that the city of Marion water or? It's the improvement district water. So if we got a hold of, so if we, if we got a hold of the improvement district, they could, they could mark the line. Or sure. does the yeah. line stop there? No, it goes right, does on go down, right on so down. So they the can hill. mark the line, so that give us some idea or at least where that's at. It goes right on down the hill on the, as you're going down the hill, it's on the right side. Right. But if we could determine where that was, and then maybe we could use that information to help help in that private land thing as far as an easement or whatever that's, else. That's up to And I hate to, hate to say that the improvement district, by chance, might have more, more land information that we wouldn't have. That's I think that would be found of record. They well, you, well, again, that's that's what we thought to begin with, but that's what they said at the register of deeds was, well, there's no sewer it, so. Does your sewer go down the hill? Does your sewer go down the hill? Yes. No, it comes up the hill. Yeah. <laughs> Whichever way it goes. It's, it's a four system, so most of it goes down the hill. It's a big hill. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. Yeah. Place, yeah. And then you put an extension on the go to Davis's. Okay. It comes from, so it comes, it comes from the road, up the hill. It comes up the hill. But... Everything still goes downhill. downhill. Yeah. <laughs> Tony told me it runs downhill. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. So we've got a plan. Yeah. There you go. Okay. We, well, okay. well I, I guess I'm still confused on okay. how do we find these actual property lines. The, the property yes. lines. I mean, do we? Well, do we need to resurvey it? Well, you shouldn't have to because he's using the 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 most information that he has was the meets and bounds survey that you can actually get from downstairs or you would have copies of. Mm -hmm. Actually shows it goes from here, so many feet in this direction to here and everything else. That's what you call a meets and bounds survey. But it's not, it's, it's the older style of surveying and not of the official deeds or the platter part that we have up on top. So, they have a little bit more, if you want to say, latitude yes. as to what they do, but that's the only information that he had that we've got the same thing that shows that. He should be able to do it because there, there's still some around in Marion County that mark from a particular tree. Yeah. Um, I own some like that. God knows where my property line is. Yeah. Because tree's long gone. Yeah. Most of them, they have. Um, change to particular marker pins in the middle of a roadway mm -hmm. um, and, and, and there there are specified ones from which I can't think of the proper term for that but they're a bigger marked medallion and sometimes they have to go a mile out of the way to find it and then start measuring around and the cost of that is borne by the property owner and it's breathtaking but it is what it is they can generally get your meets and bounds in where, where you are that has been done recently enough and most of what I saw when I pulled this shows markers from those particular benchmarks. Uh, yeah, benchmarks. Thank you. Well, yeah, but the ones that the ones that are out there was for another survey. The ones that she's got marked. And, and along you know, that road that you see, that was for they was going to sell some property, so that's different. Right. The only the thing is they, they they can serve in certain cases. Yeah. Those guys have to answer that yeah. uh, as a benchmark for this survey and then you you know you go from there save some money not having to go okay well we got to research yeah. this from the time mm -hmm. the land started you know but um, uh, most of that out there has been surveyed recently enough when I look at the stuff on file that that's doable yeah but does she own the 33 foot and the 45 foot above that's what we, yeah but, well if we get the survey done to some extent they will give an opinion if they can on that I can uh, have, I don't want to give an opinion on Have any of you seen, though, the overhead pictures that we have of yeah. the county? Yes. Okay. The one from our area around there is very, if it's accurate, it's very clear that it shows where, where your property lines are. I would love to say that it is, but it doesn't appear to be. That's what we were talking about earlier. Well, what she's talking about is, is the GIS maps yeah, yeah. that she got from downstairs. Our GIS well. maps are just based on the legal descriptions for tax yes. purposes. Yeah. They're not like the legal. They will, they will not consider that to be, you know, for, legal, for legal property lines, that is not sustainable. It gives you an idea of topographically where things are, but that can be off by quite a bit. 
then you're putting taxes on it. I would just go and say, though, that that's not correct. No, no, no. 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> this is, this is no, just, just a picture is all it is. Okay. The whole then they superimpose those it's rents on it. Or it's or it's it's or well, and that, and that GIS the, 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 does show an easement for a roadway. Yeah, no, that, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I would suggest you check with the improvement district. They should have a pretty good accurate record of when they put the water line in. Well, yeah, they, they'll be able to mark it. And like I said, that will determine where that line is compared to how it relates to everything else. Well, but you were yeah. talking about, they may so may be able to show you some ownerships and so on, but they should have a pretty good record of that. Maybe. They should yes. have. What, what they will do in certain instances when you're getting the project done and don't want something to get in the way of it, and I'm not saying that in a bad sense with anybody, they'll lay that line in, and after 15 years, it's a prescriptive easement anyway. Well, Nobody complains that everybody a, wants the water, they laid them in. I'm just saying there's another possible source yeah. of information so you yeah. can get it as right as you can. Yeah. You won't get it perfect, but yeah. get it as right as you can. Well, I think we've gone as uh, far as we can today, so I, I guess I would suggest that the property owners maybe continue to work with Bryce, uh, see if we can't get the information on the property lines. I have one other comment. You older commissioners remember i used to buy your lottery tickets yes so you could do yes. improvements in the county maybe yeah. i should start doing that again <laughs> yeah. but we never had one that won though i didn't yeah. buy the right one, the right one. <laughs> he kept those he kept it's called one. gambling yeah. Yeah. I, I I should start have, that again. Okay. excuse me yes as far as um blocking the public road mm -hmm. that is something the county will do or is that something that the homeowners would do to stop the public going through there. Where we were talking about earlier, the decision that lays on the property line. Okay. So if you you are entitled to put a, okay. anything you want on your property. The simple advantage okay. to the private property owner doing that if leaving those access easements. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 There's got to be that ability to have that access, and if yes. we do it, we control it. Yeah. So that if you want it open, it's you know unless we access that in some way that we can give you a bad lock combination or something, you'd have problems. Mm -hmm. Put it on your side of that, you still can't block or landlock someone, but you can control no. it completely in terms of well, we know how we're going to open it and how we're going to control it, and yeah. how we're going to chain it and all of that. Yeah, it's just for the public. Yeah. To keep keep us all. Yep. From I understand. Going through. Then Bryce has signs. I'll have to sign each of that. That'll be on the county. Which we okay. can do. That's yeah, okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. I just think that this road's been out here a long time, since day one. The county Lake. Uh, I don't think Bates's property was there. I don't know whether yours was property when your property was actually put there, on this road or why or anything because that's for my time. But what I'm saying is, if these landowners decide to close this off, I think it'd be the nicest act of the county to go up there at the end of the drive coming down to the, to the fire hydrant and do something to block it off that end. Now down at your end, I, I'm going to say it's, it's your property, you do what you want down mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But to stop the main flow of traffic, I would hope that the county would step up and do something. I would be fully support that. Yeah. But, but then the problem comes out of fact is if we put it out there, if we put it out on Dan, Dandy Dan Drive, whatever the case may be, but then we control that. So to, to allow access, but then if they wanted to get through there, they'd have to come to us to get it open. That's what that's what Brad was saying. If we put it up there, then we're liable for it. We're going to make credit. credit. And I'm saying the landowners made decision to shut their side off. Right. So we would shut our side off, so the main traffic would not go through there yeah. and do beat their stuff yeah. down. Yeah. I mean, you'd have a, you'd have a, I mean, basically some sort of double gate or whatever Maybe. else. Did. Yeah. We just have to make sure we don't let sure. anything. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for their time and their work on this. Yeah. Well, you're the one that lives there every day. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for the information. <laughs>
you got something on it. I did. I like to go home and think about it for a long time. So, I bet he buys a ticket and says I'm, I'm pretty slow. I might buy you some more tickets. That's right. I'm pretty slow. It takes me a while to figure things out. <laughs> It's fairly standardized in terms of what they do. The only thing is whether a performance bond is something that Bryce can address that. It's under the mandatory minimum that we would have to have one, so that's not an issue. It's just a question of 156 grand if you want one. Okay. Is it? Yes. Since the legal counsel is leaving, I'd like for you to get get your knowledge back up, brought up, because we need to. We've got a citizen down on, in my area down in Burns. Has a citizen run with equipment on the road, tearing the road up, and with their own tractors. I've got pictures of it here. I've got pictures of the road. Uh, we definitely. It's different than the one I asked. Yeah. But I kind of I, actually. Right. I thought that those would be part of it because that's still an open issue. Uh, culverts, everything else we that's talked about. Year. So. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm you just giving be... you a heads up that they're they're waiting on us to give it a legal counsel. Okay. What Can you send me that? kind of that example? Yeah. Maybe yeah. a chance? And I'll use that as kind of the example. Yeah. A baseline. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, don't move. The topic we had before us was the crack seal contract. I think so. Yes, I, I just. This one does say that there, if there's no payment until the work is completed. Yes. So do you recommend the bond? Honestly, I mean, um, it's a commission decision whether you're worried about that. I mean, I know we're kind of gun show for everything else. I'd like to say that it's never going to get anywhere near that again, but that's totally up to you guys. We did, we did specify it. Um, I think so I think we're going to change this rule at all because I don't know why we kind of pushed it. But, um, that if we put an exception in the rule, it's only if there's a one time payment. Okay. If there's progressive payments at all, it requires a Okay. Well, and that's what I did here was, and honestly, I think I think they give them 10 days to do the project. I think it'll take about yeah. half of that. Right. So I don't know. Right. So. so any action you need to take? Uh, yes, you'll need to take action to approve the contract All right. and authorize the chair to sign. Is there a motion to approve the uh, contract with <coughs> payment pros uh, for the road crack seal bid contract and allow the chairman to sign? So moved. Okay, motion by Commissioner Becker is our second. Second by Commissioner Gehring. All in favor say aye. 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 If you're opposed, please say nay. No days, it's five and out. All right. Okay. okay. We're in the report. Uh, so have they any progressive thing? What's that? You gotta tell them no. <laughs> you gotta go buy a bond if you gotcha. want to do progress. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, you? and regardless, we would need a bond if it's over that hundred thousand. Yeah. Yep. No. Um, can a utility permit there from non uh, telephone? Okay. Utility permit from non telephone at uh, 130th and Eagle. Mm -hmm. Any issues? Or? No, no, pretty, pretty straight and simple and straight. So, any opposition? There's no opposition. Yeah, just okay. just, just sign. Okay. All right. Um, as of February eighth, 
Seven? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> the new uh, CDL requirements for federal government went into place. Uh, basically, uh, they are not allowed to go to the driver's license examiner now. They have to go to a certified person to go through training, both written and driving. Um, new license? Yes. Well, it's for new license or anybody that upgrades to an A or a B, and if they get a bus or a chauffeur or anything to that effect. Uh, renewals, this does not come into play. Um, but anyway, we've kind of talked amongst ourselves. Um, and I talked to the city as well. We don't, I mean, in order for us to get somebody, we would have to apply to have one of our guys become a trainer. Um, and so you'd have to go through that. So it goes on a nation, nationwide basis of uh, a database that you have to select one of those people to do it. Well, then once you get to the written portion, um, you basically have to go through the driving portion as well. And you still have to go to one of these places to have somebody do the test for you. So with that being said, we've kind of looked around to find people that do this as a program, whatever else. Um, all over the board, from anywhere from, uh, well, this one, the one I was going to talk about was a, a couple of days. I ended up six or eight different days. They would do the whole thing. Some of them are four to six months anywhere from a couple thousand dollars to fifteen thousand dollars crazy so what we had kind of and i talked to josh about this as well that we had talked about uh hutchinson community college actually has a program that you can go down for that they're on a friday and saturday two consecutive weeks that you take the the, the, the study for the written portion they have the manuals and everything else basically top to bottom go through that then they take that test, and then once you're done with that, I believe it was four more classes after that to take the written portion. They basically have one of their guys basically do the test. So during that amount of time, and that four to six weeks, or whatever it was, start to finish, they'd have their CDL. Um, the cost was about, was it $1, $1,495? Which, like I said, is tremendously less expensive than everybody else. But we look at the fact is that the time that we spent having our guys sit there and train them, show them, stuff like that, uh, we supply a truck for them to go out and practice, and we have another guy out there working with them, you know, that as, um, as far as those experienced people helping, maybe this would be the way to go. So I guess I'd kind of ask for you guys' input. I mean, we could go about doing it the other way. Um, we have to go about, you know, we still have to go about trying to find somebody to give them a test um, and I don't know if we're allowed to do that. It's, it's, it's really kind of confusing uh, when it comes to that and, and anybody that has already started their learner's permit, we did have one individual that got his, um, his driving permit before, um, does not have to follow these rules. So, but anyway, this is nationwide um, and it's kind of a mess. Now, Again, the, the cost is there, you know, what is our direct cost for that? I don't really know. Um, comments been made, it's okay, do we, do we ask the employee to sign an agreement saying I guess the early six months? Or they you know, pay, pay it back? Yes. Yeah. Now, the problem is we require the Class A CDL for our position descriptions. So, do you make somebody pay for something that's required? Well, if you're gonna... If you're going to hook it up to it for free, yeah. Well, you know, again, I mean, do we use that as an incentive to say, hey, we'll, you know, but if you want your CDL, you're going to have to go find it yourself. Yeah, no, I think or, I, I, I'm paying for them to get the CDL, but there's got to be restrictions. Well, I'm like, you can't just come here for a free, free, free CDL. Free yeah. CDL. Just stay for a year. Well, whatever that may be. Um, I guess that's something for you guys to. Um, whether it's six months or a year, um, you know. And I would agree with Joan on offering the training. That's 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 an incentive. I kind of thought so. I had understood. I talked to a custom cutter, and he was telling, talking to me about the same thing. And he said he is required to pay for it. Well, I guess I didn't see that. But and again, he said, well, that's why I was asking. Yeah. He, he said, he says. It's going to cost me an arm and leg, but I'm requ it's a requirement yeah. of the employer yeah. under the new federal. 
Well, it might be that any candidates for drivers don't have a CDL or they're already off on other higher is paying it, jobs. Yeah, is there, there used to be different bars for interstate and interstate, right? These, these are just established as the, the federal requirements, and I don't think there's really, the only thing really different between intrastate and interstate was the medical card. And if you're driving in, in intrastate, you don't need the medical card. Well, I know this applies to farmers. Mm -hmm. And they're not driving as local. They're not going yeah. interstate. So, so it would it would apply to all. So but I guess farmers no longer have a we no longer exemption. Have free pass. So no, nobody has exemption. Thing. Yep. They don't have a free pass. Yep. Means means you guys to haul weed in are gonna have to have a if you're if you're a new driver. Yes. If you are applying, that's why there was a flood of people yes. applied before this deadline. If you're a new driver, well, if you are new, right. running a wheat truck since I was six years old, I'm a not a new driver. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if you if, if you have not CDL. Yeah, yeah, if you have not started the process, CDL. yes. If you have not started the process, so started. so any farmer that didn't no, have no, a CDL, no, 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 let me back out. If you go for hire, not for your personal. But if you are, if you're required to have a CDL, if you're doing for hire hauling, okay, you're so required to have a CDL. So if you're hauling your own weed in, you don't have to have a CDL. No, but if if you do, so the farmers didn't lose the exemption. <laughs> if you do custom work, custom work, then you would. Yeah. yeah, But if you hire a ranch hand that works for you, or it comes drives for you, he don't have to go to CDL because you haul your grain. Yeah. He doesn't. In your no, he doesn't. Yeah. So, anyway, so we got the same option. Now I, I will tell you when I when I contacted the lady at Western Community College last week, uh, she told me that they're booked up through August. However, she said we have another list that basically has cities and counties and whatever else people that we will get them in. We will sneak them into these courses faster than what we would a private people do. Is there any opposition to Bryce's plan? Does this thing take well, you all the way going, through it then? Yes. Going Start forward just to have a place. Just to have Everybody a place. does the same. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Do they ever go out and do satellite schools? I mean, no. If we had 10 people? No. Every, right. Everything is done right there okay. with the trucks and everything. So. In Hutch? Yes. Like I said, set up for a Friday and a Saturday, and then the next week, Friday and Saturday. And so the only expense would be probably providing a vehicle to go down. But has anybody ever explained what their government's accomplishing with this? Don't go there. I, I no. just, I have heard. That. <laughs> well, I think, I think they figured out you could drive a truck and you could make six figures a year, so they wanted a piece of the action. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> Well, I mean, ultimately, <laughs> let's, let's get back yeah. to the topic. They're just trying to make drivers safer by more regulations. Safe. Yeah. Safety is no good. Sure. Well, we already have a supply chain. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what's, what's your next topic? Uh, so, so sure do we go ahead and do that? Do you want to do the six month or a year? Do you want to look at what we do for the EMS class There's grants? There's a great idea. Yes, yeah. yeah. it's and, and, um, Go. Okay, I'll talk to Travis. I think what they do is if they, if they give up for that year over, the cost goes back up to them. Yep. charge. That's exactly right. I, I think we have that on. Okay, yeah, that works. Really is that that sounds good. <clears throat> Uh, as far as the, uh, you asked me to check into the 50th East of 77, with the post, the post? Yes. Um, I went down and looked at it, um, and, and I told her before, I said, when we first open up the road, we do the same thing. We're more worried about getting the road open. If we catch dirt, grass, whatever else, and plow that open, we come back and try to fix it later. Like I said, that's the big push. And I think that's what happened here was, uh, there's, there's a few false shoulders down there, and when uh, Mr. Watkins went down and cleaned it up, I think he opened up some of that into her property. What's been done out there can be fixed uh, fairly easily, you know, even by us with a blade or whatever else. Um, but it still comes down to the issue of, of you know, people using um, or maintaining our roads. So, um, and, I, and I told her, said so we could definitely come down and fix that. It's not anywhere near a, um, uh, the grass isn't growing, whatever else. So I mean, within. A month or two, we could go clean it up and probably still be okay. It's just uh, had to put good gravel on it. Well, yeah, but I mean the part the part up on that's actually thrown up on her property can be raked out for whatever the case may be. This gets there. It's not a lot, but I mean, and I do appreciate that they take care of the ditches, you know, they mow and things like that. So, um, 
Where was this at? On 50th east of 77. Yeah, okay. between yeah. Florence and Burton. Yeah, yeah, start at the bottom, go up to the top of the Green Deer track. Yeah, Green yeah. Tractor. Um, so, 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 like I said, that's our main push is just to get the roads open. And like I said, we'll have to go back and fix road, fix stuff too. Okay. When you're when you're out there trying to plow through snow a couple feet deep, you can't see what's down underneath there, and you know. But I would advise you. I got another phone call this morning. So okay, about about this. The same thing. Same topic. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and, and like I said, it's it's we encounter that. So. Big, the big push is getting the roads open, and, and that's usually what most people say. It's, yeah, just getting the road open, and then, um, so. But anyway. And there seems to be animosity. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, it's yeah, not, it's, 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 neighbors don't get it's, along. It's not, it's, it's not going to get any better. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how we're going to handle it. Yeah. So. The yeah. Well, commission has never taken a position on private access or private use of roads. So. Yeah. If we're going to talk about it, we better be ready to take a position. Yeah, yeah that's. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I had, unless you guys had anything else, is I'd like to have uh, an executive session for about five minutes for a possible land acquisition. Okay. So, you guys have anything else? No? Okay. Um, oh, no, that takes your. Yeah. Okay. Five minutes? Yeah, that's fine. I move that we recess the executive session in order to discuss. Where is it? Oh, so that's number six. Preliminary that's discussion of acquisition of real estate pursuant to KSA 75 4319B, and that's item six. Preliminary discussion of acquisition of real estate with the commission, Bryce, Tina. Yeah. For five minutes, going, I lost my call. Going in that. Uh, 346. 346 come out at 341. 351. 351. 341. Yeah. That's how it's there. Second. Second by Commissioner Gary. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Nay. Aye. That's five minutes. 356 and come back out at 341. But that specifically addressed somehow. So. Okay. I guess you could come out of the first book. Oh, this conference will now be recorded. All right, we're out of executive session. No decisions made. Anything else, Bryce? No, that's it. Let's we'll have some else. Okay. Thank no. you. Okay, thanks. I think our last administrative item was the review of the lease purchase bid from the two motor graders. <laughs> Uh, that was one other thing um, the convention the Republican Party will be holding the convention to elect someone to fill the sheriff's vacancy and they are going to be doing that at the Lake Hall on March 5th since they are doing that for a county position I said I would ask the commission if we could waive the rental fee yes. at the Lake Hall has that been done in the past? We haven't held one okay. before. Okay. I think the last one they did the city. city. However, yeah. when we do county functions out there, we don't typically charge yeah, ourselves. That's true. What's the commission? We need motion. I would say it would be great to have a motion. I'll make a motion to waive the late fee for the precinct convention on March the 5th. We've got a motion by Commissioner Becker or second, second. by Commissioner Gary. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carried 5 0. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. We did have, uh, we do have the lease purchase bids. There are also, uh, Commissioner Crowfoot sent a preliminary plan um, or preliminary document showing the Veterans Memorial. And so I can forward that on to, to you all. And Isaac can check in with the Historical Society. What they can and can't do. Okay. And again, also I can send what what was sent. I believe that still needs to. I mean, it was that process, and it still yes. needs to go through planning and zoning. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Just preliminary. Yeah. This is the first attempt. 
we're we still administrative? Are you done? Do you know? No, I still. The lease purchase bid okay. for the motor riders was the last time. I think we should go with the apparent local bid. Okay. Yeah. 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 I second. We have a motion to go with the low bid of Burns on the the uh, lease purchase bid by Commissioner Aaron, second by Commissioner Dalkey. Any further discussion? Uh, the only thing, when you see it in black and white, <laughs> what does that do to our future purchase power? Look at anything else. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, it's, yeah. it's quite a hunk here. And the reason why I want to bring it up is for that is because a long time ago, and I don't know whether it's any good today or not, is the lease purchase where we rotate stuff, whether we whether this is whether the rate we're we was only paying 180 or 250,000 then. Now we're up above 300 and so. So the lease purchase I don't know where it comes into effect, whether whether that becomes a big Pro program change or not for us as county commissioners? Where you just in the lease equipment, the equipment rotation, right? Yeah, you just lease it basically, not to, not to. You're basically running all six years. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it. But this is buy. We're buying this. Yes. One. Yeah. So, so I just want you guys to, before we take the vote, just remember that. Okay. Any further discussion? Not all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carried five vote. How many more we're going to sell? When do you think you can sell? There's a couple, a couple, two or three. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we've got them sitting around. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need to. They need to be gone. Look at the Especially whole when place. used equipment selling well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. All right, we've finished uh, road and bridge. We've finished administrative. No, i got something to administrate. Okay, we're happy to administrate. And I haven't had a chance to talk to Tina, but. I just heard, talked to another employee that's working for Marion County again and, he's, and retired uh, under capers. And so we have to pay extra for these employees for retirement or capers. My question, Tina, is there any way that we should challenge this to the capers? Because, and I don't know what that takes, why it costs so much more for them. I mean, I don't know the background or anything. I'm just asking. Yeah, they're in the old keepers. Yeah, the way to challenge that is through your legislators. Okay. But so if you want to compose a letter to your our, our state legislators, then we can do that. But to the capers organization, I mean, it's all it's all regulated by state statute. Yeah. They, it's all done by our okay. Kansas state lawmakers. But right now, in our time. I don't know how many we've got. Do we have six, five, six, or seven? Uh, I haven't checked lately. Uh, we're, we're, I don't know that it's that many. Okay. Um, I, I'm probably, I know, I can think of two right now. We've had more before, okay. and some yeah. of them aren't with us anymore. And then another one that's potentially coming back. So maybe three or four. Yeah. What, what's the issue that you the capers rate is a lot higher than everybody else. They've already they're already retired through capers, so they're pulling a retirement. Oh. And so they can't they don't contribute to capers anymore, but the county has to, if we hire one of those retirees, we have to pay thirty percent right. in on their wages to capers. And, and, and I do not understand why though. That's I mean I can't feature why because if they're already drawn it, why why don't we pay normal on them? I mean you know, I just don't understand. Does that. it build up their retirement? It doesn't add to their retirement, no. No. Okay. And no. they can only work uh, until they reach a certain amount, and then they have to stop drawing their retirement, and then just have their county wage, I believe. Okay, I see. It. And I don't know all about facts, and that's. I'm just. At just, least that's how it was. I'd have to double check on that part because I'm not in the day to day all the time anymore of that, but. I believe that's the case. Once they hit a certain earnings limit, they can either stop working for the county or stop their retirement for that year until, and then it starts over, I believe, yeah, if they go each year. work for the state, it's the same thing? Yes. I mean, you, you retire from the county and go to work for the state. Same thing. Hmm. It, it, um, I actually, I need to double check that. There are different rules 
or the same employer yeah. versus a different employer. Yeah. But either way, if their capers are tiring, you pay them, it's a higher rate. I think uh, you just hit something. The same employer is one of the big deal in it, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I just bring yeah. it up to our I'll have to refresh to on that there's on there's the specifics of it. Three years to make sure it was created to, to handle another problem. Yes. As a response to I'm sure it probably was, and it's only been a few years back that they changed that. However, it it, it, it is causing a lot of difficulties with in this labor market that we're in. Um, yeah. Yeah. People are retired at 55. But it probably was to solve an unemployment problem way back. So, so thank you, worse. old guys. I'm done the job. Okay. Too long. Any anything else over administrative? Okay, public forum. I don't believe we've got anyone. If we do, William has any comments? William. I don't know William. I've been on there a few times. Okay. Uh, commission comments. Uh, just, just a uh, short comment. Uh, I do know that two of the commissioners took a trip to El Dorado to look at buildings, which is fun and dandy. Uh, I think going forward would be nice if all the commissioners knew what was going on. Not that I have an issue with it, but I think it, I think everybody should know. You know, if there's going to be some people taking a trip or whatever. All right, uh, Commissioner Crowfoot and I did go down to look at the person public health and also Harvey County public health. Yeah, I, I, it's one of them deals if we get out if the other commissioners get asked on the street well why'd they go do that the rest of us don't know nothing okay that's uh, that's all it's about all right uh, we're also going to dickinson county to look at their document storage on thursday cool cool i just just think it's out good if, good public deal. if you don't want us going looking at other counties no, just no it, that's not i don't i just think the whole the, the commission the whole commission should know okay well it came up short notice in the future if there's any trips on that team i mean all i have to do is have tina send out an yeah. email yeah. all right and how many are going through so we can't email no group. tina has to send it out to her okay Same yeah email. i'll send i can send the information out and just don't respond too. because you could you could run the risk of I can disseminate information, but if you start having interactive conversations right. outside of well, the meeting, yeah, I understand that. then you you can run the risk right. of an open meeting. Sure. Yeah. So was it the same two going yeah. Thursday? Does she want to go and find something else to do? Well, if I didn't have to be in Hutchison, I'd be in <laughs> But, you know, yeah. if, if, if we'd have known about it sooner, maybe Randy would want to go. No, 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 no. So, just asked me yesterday. It, I hope we learn to see some buildings as, that we can design something off of and help us. That's what I want. That's the whole idea. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No, I take a motion to adjourn. I'm. Motion, Commissioner Gehring. Is there a second? No. You, made no, you made it. Okay. Well, you I made it. Say aye. 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 Aye.